Some may call me a water polo player, others call me a sorority girl, but I call myself a multimedia journalist. My name is Maria Palladino and I'm a news reporter who can produce, shoot, and edit my own news packages. A live shot? No big deal. A news conference? Already got it covered. My past experience as a reporting intern for KCRG TV9 and Daily Iowan TV have prepared me to be a successful reporter. The following are examples of how I was able to tell the stories of the new Iowa City Brew Lab, a costume sale of a local resident, and improvements on sustainability in the area. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy my resume reel. Thank you very much and all the proceeds go to Lucas Farms neighborhood. Judy Nyron spent most of her life making costumes, but now she's putting that behind her to sell them all for a good cause. She's a volunteer on the steering committee of the Lucas Farms Neighborhood Association and currently lives in the neighborhood. The steering committee is just kind of a loosely organized group of people that are willing to take on maybe a little more leadership or responsibility. All of her creations are $10 or less and all of the money raised from the sale will go right back into neighborhood projects. That includes movie nights at Mark Twain Elementary School in the winter and historical signage in the neighborhood. Nyren loves being able to give back to her community and is getting them ready for Halloween. With the costumes, I guess just trying to help people because a lot of times they come in and they just don't know what they want to be or I always have a sense of accomplishment if I help someone find something they can be comfortable in. Most costumes are labeled with a specific name like the Australian Outback Explorer or Chick Magnet to make it easier for people to choose a costume. Whether rain or shine, hundreds of props and costumes are up for grabs. Nyren hopes to sell all of her creations, but if any are left over, they will be donated to local nonprofit organizations. The sale will end around 6 p.m. on Hollow's Eve. Maria Palladino, Daily Iowan TV. In the nine square block of downtown Iowa City, four of these solar powered trash and recycling compactors replace 10 of these regular garbage cans. They come with the name Big Belly and have two separate sides, one for trash and one for recyclables. Its blinking light is run by the sun's energy that powers the battery. Through the software, it updates staff members at the Operations Center of Iowa City on the status of each bin. So there's just a small line of lights, so staff knows, and we get an email every day saying that the bins are green, completely fine. If they're yellow, half full, or red, they need to be empty. Each set costs about $8,000 and can hold up to about 200 pounds. Once each bin is full, the belly's digestion process begins. Right here in the big belly are laser detectors. Once the recyclable or trash material reaches a certain height that hits the laser, eventually the trash and recyclables will compact. Promoting sustainability is a main focus of these new compactors but so is saving a few daily trips for anyone picking up the garbage. I think it's saving on gas, I think it's saving on um, the, you know, human resources to go change them out. It saves on a lot of things, the, even the garbage bags. The compactors are a permanent addition to help provide a visibly clean, green, and safe environment in Iowa City. By next summer, the city hopes to install four to six more bellies in the area. Maria Palladino, Daily Iowan TV. Drilling and gluing are some of the tasks being finished in the new Iowa City Brew Lab. I knew Iowa City didn't have a brewery, so I always kept my eye on it, thought it would be a great location. It's like, why doesn't Iowa City have a brewery? And Letcher is teaming up with his son to prepare their business for opening day. Nathan's background in biochemistry is the reason the duo began brewing beer at home years ago. Since then, they've been immersed in the science of beer. This scientific background inspired the name Iowa City Brew Lab and the furniture that will go inside. These science tables and stools will be placed by the bar, towards the back of the brewery, and by the front windows. Outside on the back patio, German-style benches will be placed in the beer garden. But Drew says the brewing area is their most exciting venture. Construction has been going on since the middle of the summer. Once the construction's over, right by these tanks is where Drew and Nathan are going to be spending most of their time. This area contains the fermenters, a brew kettle, a hot water tank, and mash tun. 
It's where the co-owners will make their high-quality beer using fresh and homemade ingredients. Students who live above the brewery on Washington Street have a quick trip to the brew lab to get their taste buds on some fresh made beer. Me and my roommates are really excited about it. Um, it's going to be really nice to have something very close and convenient for us, um, but something that also is kind of not typical of downtown Iowa City. Iowa City Brew Lab will be open by November 1st with beers like the duo's own creations, IPAs, and seasonal flavors. Maria Palladino, Daily Iowan TV.